Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we'll be taking a look at this integral. Um, and we are almost at 150 videos, 150 different examples on this channel. Most of them uh, Feynman integration. Um, so let's get right into it. So, step one. We're going to rewrite the integral just by factoring out an e to the negative 2x. So now it looks like this. Simple enough. All right. Now we'll define the integral as a function of t. We're just going to replace this 2 with a t. So now we have a, um, an integral um, that closely resembles our original integral. And notice that if we plug in 2, we simply get i. And also, if we let uh, t go to infinity, this thing's going to converge to 0, because we'll end up with e to the negative infinity. So that goes to 0. All right. So next, we're going to differentiate our function of t uh, with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. So what that allows us to do is bring this derivative right inside the integration. And if you um, take the partial with respect to t of this integrand, you know that this x will cancel out and it will introduce a negative sign. So this is what we end up getting. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate that integral. We'll compute the integral separately. You'll notice that this e to the negative tx will distribute um, through there. So we'll actually end up with two separate integrals, the first of which is just going to be uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine x e to the negative tx. Now, that's not a trivial integral to evaluate. It's what's known as a Phoenix integral. You'll have to use integration by parts twice, and then you'll end up with a constant multiple of the original integral, which you can use to solve the original integral. And then, of course, we have our other integral. Um, that's e to the x times e to the negative tx. That just simplifies to e to the negative t plus 1x, which is going to evaluate to 1 over t plus 1. Go ahead and verify that for yourself. So now we have the answers uh, to the two separate integrals, and now we just uh, we combine them. So don't forget we had a negative sign to begin with, um, so we distribute that negative sign, and this is what our f prime of t is. That's, that's what you get when you evaluate our original f, of, f prime of t that was defined as an integral. Okay, so now we are not interested in f prime of t. We want f of t, so we have to integrate f prime of t to find f of t. So we're just going to take this integral and we'll evaluate them separately. All right, so the first integral can be solved like this. We just let u equal t squared plus 1, then du is equal to 2 uh, dt, and you just get this. It's a... Uh, Pretty, pretty standard stuff, and we don't actually need the absolute values here, obviously. Um, I don't know why I put them in there. And now we're going to integrate the other one, and that's easy. That's just the natural log, and we do need absolute values here. Um, technically, we need absolute values, but um, not really because we're not interested in evaluating t um, for, uh, you know, any... We're only interested in evaluating t, uh, the, this function at, you know, positive values. So we, we technically don't need the absolute value. All right, so now we're just going to combine those results, and we end up with f of t is equal to this thing right here. Again, we don't need the absolute values because we are not evaluating our function of t at, uh, at any point um, that would cause this term, right, this term inside the natural log to be negative. Um, all right, so now we have, an, we have our f of t plus that constant of integration that we need to solve for. But don't forget, we know that if we let t go to infinity, f of t evaluates to zero. So we can take this limit right here. Um, and you'll see that this is, this is basically what it ends up being. Take the limit as t goes to infinity. Um, you're going to get natural log infinity minus that one half natural log. Well, 
I didn't explain this very well, but um, basically what you can do is rewrite this t plus 1 as 1 half t plus 1 all squared. And then you'll see if you take the limit, this limit does go to 0. And you can, um, you can figure that out easily enough for yourself. And we will get a c is equal to 0 as a result. All right. So now we have our final expression for f of t. We know that our c is equal to 0, so it just drops out. And now this is our, this is our f of t right here. So we can simplify, the, simplify that using the properties of logarithms. That's just going to be 1 half natural log of t plus 1 squared over t squared plus 1. That's it. Now we just plug in 2 and we're done. So we evaluate f of t at 2 and we get one half natural log nine fifths so um this integral right here evaluates the one half natural log nine fifths all right guys i hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time